Hey folks, this is Riker with the final video in my David Brevik interview series. In this video, we do a retrospective on Diablo 2 and talk about the new game that one of the fathers of Diablo is working on. The question we'll lead with here is, what do you think it takes to create a successful PvP experience in an action RPG and why do you think Diablo 2 was successful? Well, I think D2 was successful because it was it was kind of brutal. <laughs> Uh, and so, and I also think that that was really a little bit more of the style of, of, it, it was, I, I don't know how familiar you are with, uh, Ultima Online, but it was, it felt a little bit more along the Ultima Online ways of doing things, right? It was just kind of this harsh, uh, world. And, and the fact that, you know, there was this semi ways that you could trick people out of equipment and things like that. That was like, you know, there, there were, there were, there was all these little minor exploits and stuff that, that made it much more intense. Right. You know? Yeah. And so that, uh, when you remove all of that stuff, then it's not quite the same. And plus PVP has really changed a lot between when we made Diablo two. And now there's all sorts of games that are centered on PVP. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so PVP's advanced, a long way and and really the action rpg pvp hasn't really advanced almost at all. in fact it's if you could you could say it's regressed because it's it's more care bear than ever right or you know rather than uh and rather than oh my god he took my awesome item so the uh uh so you know i think that there you know that uh in order to make it more successful it has to be more thrilling it has to be more dangerous hmm. and uh and you know but then you're looking that if you have that in your game, expect that that's what your game's going to be about. So, uh, you know, it's making sure that people know what they're getting into when they're getting into dangerous situations is important if you're going to make that a part of the game. I know MMOs have, like, some will have PvP servers, some are PvE servers. Do you think uh, something similar could happen in an ARPG? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's no reason that, that you couldn't do the same sort of thing. But that way people know what they're getting into and choose... Yeah. to either have that atmosphere or not. And uh, what about the uh, the multiplayer PvP arenas that uh, Blizzard was initially promising for D3, but that never really came to fruition? Do you think that kind of stuff could work as well? or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it worked in League of Legends. It's, there's almost no reason that it can't work for Diablo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, I think that some of the problems are that, obviously, that you run into... You know, I think they've run into it with World of Warcraft. Balancing skills for PvE versus PvP is tough. Mm -hmm. So really, if you did something where maybe your PvP skills were separate than your PvE skills, then then you don't have to worry about as much. And But then are you making two games, mm -hmm. you know, and so they, you know, they, uh, so you have to be kind of careful. It's, it's tough to balance that. And, uh, and, but at the same time, I think that team based PVP stuff is the most fun. That's the, when I'm, when I'm on a team with a few other people, regardless of it is from Overwatch to League of Legends to, uh, you know, Battlegrounds and WoW or whatever it is, you know, that I feel like the, those, those are the best experiences in my opinion, not necessarily the, you know, deathmatch, me, you, I'm smack, we're smacking on each other kind of thing. So before release, the Diablo three developers promised us PVP arenas. They promised us a PvP experience that would be superior to Diablo 2's. As we got closer to release, they told us that PvP wouldn't be ready for release, but to expect it to release shortly thereafter. Shortly after release, the devs said that they were still working on PvP, and to expect it to come later in the year. Again, they promised that it would be better than Diablo 2's PvP. Eventually, they just said that they could not get their PvP arenas in a place that they were happy with, and they just effectively gave us Diablo 2's PvP. Now, sometimes people ask, why is it that Diablo 3's PvP is not successful, given it's basically like Diablo 2's PvP? Well, I think David Brevik hit the nail on the head here. It's a watered-down version of Diablo 2's PvP. It's D2's PvP without the brutality. I was never into the Diablo 2 PvP scene, but I know that a lot of people who were just enjoyed the ability to go out and murder other players. 
without having to specifically go to a fighting grounds to do it. When you'd kill another player, they'd drop an ear that you can keep as a trophy of your conquest. When they die, they'd drop gold that you'd be able to pick up, loot from their bodies. A lot of people did not like the brutal aspect of PvP in Diablo 2, but there was an appeal there to a certain type of player. Then there was the other type of PvP player that preferred the honorable duels. Why hasn't that type of player embraced Diablo 3's PvP? Again, David Brevik gives the answer. PvP has evolved so much since the Diablo 2 days. People who want a PvP experience have so many options right now amongst games that are just designed specifically around that. And they offer experiences that are so much more refined than what Diablo 2's PvP and now Diablo 3's PvP have to offer. Diablo 3 dueling just doesn't cut it anymore. Next, I asked David Brevik what he liked most about Diablo 2, what he was most satisfied with. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Um... You know, I, I, it's really tough for me to be satisfied with about anything. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And uh, so I end up in a situation where, like, I go back and I play things and all I want to do is fix them. <laughs> so, the, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that overall, you know, I think that the, um, you know, what I'm really happy with is the fact that uh, the progression through the game I think is really incredible. And I think it's very difficult to come into a game, have barely any instruction, and millions of people can play the game. Hmm. Uh, you know, that is extremely difficult to do. A lot of games will force you through a terrible tutorial. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the fact that you could just pick up the game, it was intuitive, you could click on monsters, loot things, and slowly introduce you to all these concepts, become a very complicated game at the end. That ramp of progression and stuff is something I'm probably most proud of. That That is very difficult to do, and it's, it's it, it takes tons of iteration and time. This was something that I'd never really reflected on before, but is so true. Diablo 2 struck the perfect balance between depth and accessibility. It offers more depth than Diablo 3, but offers more accessibility than Path of Exile. Diablo 3 is a great RPG to introduce people to ARPGs. Path of Exile is a great ARPG for veterans of the genre. But Diablo 2, Diablo 2 was a game that could introduce people to the genre and then reveal a world of depth to them. Next, I asked David Brevik what are some things he wishes he could change about Diablo 2 today. Well, like I said, stamina bar. I wish that we hadn't put that in. But the, uh, <laughs> and throwing potions. But the, um, uh, uh, you know, there's little things here and there. It's like, you know, Oh my God! I got to individually pick up gold and stuff. <laughs> like, you know, we didn't we didn't know them better at the time, and it felt like the right decisions. But the but now with kind of more modern conveniences, I wish that, that we could go back and and fix some of that stuff so to, to make it a little easier on people. The quality of life changes are a big reason why I find it difficult to go back and play Diablo 2 today. I love Diablo 2. It was one of my favorite games. I played it for years. But the genre has since evolved so many quality of life changes that. It's difficult to return to a time without them. Next, I asked if there was anything that he wanted to add to Diablo 2 in the past, but wasn't able to. Yeah, there was a bunch. Uh, probably the most controversial change that we made, internally controversial. Uh, in fact, people were so upset that they put protest signs up on their doors. Uh, uh, is that at one point when you were, when we in the game development, and I don't remember how long it was, how far along it was but i would say that it was within six months of the end within a year for sure but probably around six months i i came up with this idea that we were going to that monsters were going to drop things that were more appropriate for the monsters to be dropping because I, I thought it was always kind of silly that you kill the bat and the halberd drops out right so yeah. they <laughs> i think that it, like I wanted to make a little bit more gritty, a little bit more realistic game. And so we started uh, having uh, monsters drop body parts. Uh -huh. And so like when you killed something, it would drop its heart or its brain or its eyeball or its guts or whatever. And so you would like, and they would use these were components for things. And so uh, 
So you would go around and like the, it made a lot more sense as you were killing stuff or whatever and collecting these components to combine to, in the cube to make all sorts of fun things. And then Mike called me and he said, well, you know, they, they had been playing or whatever and they really liked the build, but you know, it's, it's really gory. It's really <laughs> disgusting. Like I open up my inventory and there's like eyeballs and hearts and shit all over the place. Like, it's just like this, I'm carrying around guts. All, you know, and I'm like, Oh my God, you're right. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, we should probably get rid of that. Cause it was just like an inventory full of like, <laughs> of awful, you know, it was, the, <laughs> it, was, it was disgusting as hell. So it might as well just been dripping blood on the interface. The, um, <laughs> And uh, so anyway, we, we got rid of that, and that, but people really loved when we had it in, and they loved how dark and gritty and, and gross that was. And uh, so it'll be, uh, you know, I think that was one of the biggest controversial things is removing that. I think it was the right decision in the end, but at the, at the same time, it was pretty cool to have all those body parts in there. Um, and uh, it definitely gave it a, a you know, a, a dark atmosphere, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then... Uh, the biggest thing that we didn't put in is that we wanted to put in Battle.net Town. Uh, and this was an idea where instead of landing in the chat room, you actually landed in a, in a, the world, into a, an instance of the world. And so you wouldn't, you know, when you were in, ta when you were in Battle.net, you were in kind of a graphic interface where you walked around and chatted with people. There was a chat or whatever, but you could go visit things and do some shopping and stuff like that and trade with people and whatnot. And you would like, they would be on the screen and they'd be doing stuff. And, uh, and we worked really hard at trying to get it done. And then we just ran out of time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, it ended up having to be cut probably in the last three months of the product. This battle at town idea sounds similar to what path of exile does, but, Path does it on a lesser scale. When you're in a town in Path of Exile, you're in something of an instance MMO town in which other random players can be found running around and you can interact with them, trade with them. But once you leave town, you're then in your own instanced world. A couple videos ago, we spoke about the job postings for the new Diablo game asking for MMO experience. I wonder if it's to finally implement the Battle at Town idea. At some point, I was asking David Brevik about the voice acting in Diablo 2, and this little tidbit emerged. I mean, that was one of Bill Roper's big things that he would like do all these different, you know, the zug zugs and all this kind of stuff with <laughs> Warcraft. So, the, awesome. uh, uh, you know, the, yeah, we had a bunch of internal voice acting. We had, uh, we all got to voice, I think if I remember this, we all got to voice a cow, you know, the, doing the moves and things like that. So, the, oh, uh, the, so there were, uh, yeah, and then we he would like we had I don't know forty different cow moves or something <laughs> that we would select from, and the uh, and uh, and each one was a different person and stuff or the people that wanted to participate. I mean, so the uh, anyway, it was uh, it, yeah, we we were allowed to do and do, it, I actually tried to do some of the reading and some of the voices. I don't think my stuff was ever used, but the uh, but uh, at one point that was I was at least considered. <laughs> to wrap up the Diablo two retrospective. I asked David Brevik about what features could be implemented into a future patch or sequel to Diablo 3 or Path of Exile to make these games as successful as Diablo 2 was. Oh, I think it's almost impossible to make it as successful as Diablo 2. Diablo 2 is like, you know, people 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 have put it up on this pedestal <laughs> at this point <laughs> that it's like it's almost impossible for people to, you know, even it it's a little bit like and I and I almost like uh, you know, uh, I would say almost uh, like League of Legends, like you're trying to make another League of Legends. It's really, really hard to do that. Uh, if they made a League of Legends 2, would it be as good as League of Legends? You know, and so they uh, and not all of their new features have been that great for League of Legends. Sometimes they're hits, sometimes they aren't. And uh, and so it's really hard to kind of capture that magic and especially when there's it's seen through rose colored glasses and have this nostalgia of oh my god this thing is just so amazing it's got flaws like any other product or whatever but it was so different at the time and it, and it offered something that really didn't exist that that it was put on this in this place that it's almost impossible to to really go anywhere from uh, and so you know you get in a situation where like how long did it take them to make another decent doom game you know it was like you know doom uh, 
everybody remembered exactly what that was like. But you look back at Doom One now, and you're like, "Oh my God, well, I can't believe that! I thought that was awesome." The uh, and at a time, it was amazing. And uh, uh, and so you know, now the latest Doom, and like people are like, "Oh, this is a title worthy of Doom," kind of thing. Like it, it took a while for them to get kind of back to that that formula. So I think that um, it's hard for people to kind of capture the spirit and capture the excitement and the differences and having a unique experience that feels kind of in the same way but it but it's got some new stuff that that changes the way it feels like it's got to be something semi-revolutionary in order for it to be on the kind of that pedestal that Diablo 2 was put upon. Now, I wanted to wrap up this series with a look at what David Brevik is working on today. I asked him if there were any ARPGs he's looking forward to, and this was his reply. Uh, not really anything off the top of my head uh, that I can think of, um, again, but I've been, you know, I haven't really been paying attention to almost anything. <laughs> I've been so heads down on my product that I can't even... Yeah, I'm barely. I mean, I, I. I. It sounds stupid, but I'm. I'm really. Uh, you know, focused on this. On this project, I've got. Uh, and no exaggeration. Like, I'm getting up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm working all day, and and you know, I've got a family, so I've got to like, you know, take small breaks and help them every now and then. But then, then going back, and I'm working until like usually 11, midnight, something like that, going to bed, getting up and doing it some more. And it's not because I have to, it's because I'm having so much damn fun doing awesome. it. That, uh, that, uh, and so I barely have time for anything else these days. And, uh, and I haven't really been playing very much. And again, I've just been really just focused on this for, for a few months now, I've been really focused on it. Uh, but six months before that, I needed to wind down from my previous job and stuff like that. And, uh, and, uh, now I'm really enthusiastic and excited about what I'm doing. Any approximate time frames on when we could see, but the thing that I'm working on, I have no idea. I, I, you know, I in I, I, I'm I'm hoping this year, but I but we'll see. You know, we'll, it, it's gonna it, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself the time that's necessary to make sure that it's great. And uh, and uh, but you know, I can I can imagine that it would be done this year, but we'll see. Upon further probing, he gave more detail. Uh, I'm so I left Gazillion and Marvel Heroes about a year ago, um, and I decided to do something. I, I've lost my damn mind. I think I, I'm working as an independent game developer uh, on my own product, where I'm doing everything. I am. Uh, doing the uh, art and the programming and the design and uh, yeah, the sound and the music and everything. I'm wow. doing every part of it. Uh, and so it's kind of an indie title. It's uh, anyway, it's going, it's going well. It's, uh, it's definitely, it, it, I wouldn't call it a, an action RPG in the traditional sense, like a, a RPG like Diablo, but it is an action oriented RPG. So the, the, uh, it, it's, it's very different than other things out there. Awesome. This is uh, uh, your company, Graveyard Games, right? Yes, correct. Awesome. Yeah. So you must be having Which to learn. It consists of just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's no, no plans to bring anyone on. It's, it's going to stay just you? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I never say never, but the right. uh, but <laughs> yeah, the plan right now is to just do this particular game by myself and see where it goes, awesome. see what happens. So you must have to. I mean, and I guess I never thought about it, but having to do your own music and art, are these skills that you already have at least a little bit, or are, are you going to have to learn anything from the ground up? Um, well, the uh, the. Mainly the art is the biggest problem. I, I've mm. played music since I was a little kid, so oh. the uh, you know I, I'm a big musician, and so the That's music great. is not is I'm not that worried about. Sound effects are have always been fun, and I I would even suggest things and help out Matt Ullman when we were doing sound oh. effects. It, 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 you know I just I, I love voices and I love uh, you know music and and sound effects and stuff. So I've always kind of fiddled around with that kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously I'm a you know I'm a long time programmer, uh, so that that wasn't really the problem. The uh, the only thing was really the art. My art skills are not great, uh, but for this particular game, actually I'm you know my art skills after practicing for a year, it turns out that you can actually you know start to get pretty good at That's something. Great. So they. <laughs> 
Uh, and so my skills have been improving and I, I'm pretty happy with the way it's going. It's, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's kind of retro pixel art, but it, you know, but it's, uh, but it, I think it looks good. And people that have seen it said that they, they it looks great too. So, uh, it, it, it turns out with practice, you can do it. So. Awesome. Have you thought about uh, doing the, uh, the crowdfunding, uh, route or, no, not really. Uh, I mean, usually people do crowd crowdfunding stuff to. Uh, I mean, don't give me this is a big rant of mine actually on the, uh, on crowdfunding, but uh, crowdfunding in general, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people do that to make sure that they have enough money to get to the finish line on a particular product or whatever. If I need to get money, I can go raise capital in a variety of different ways from. You know, an investor to friends to all sorts of stuff. But uh, right now, I'm for in a fortunate enough position that I can I can take the time to do the product. So, awesome, awesome. What instruments uh, did you play growing up? Uh, I started playing piano uh, when I was a little kid. Uh, I started, I think, when I was six or so. I started playing piano, taking piano lessons, and I did that uh, and played piano. Uh, you know, I still have my actual first piano is up, oh, you know, wow. upstairs. <laughs> now my one of my daughters is learning to play piano. So the um, uh, and then I changed to percussion instruments uh, in starting in I would say late middle school, uh, and then I was like in marching band in high school, and then symphony and 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 in college I was in marching band, and so. Uh, I was a drummer for a very long time. Still am a drummer. I have my drum set upstairs and stuff like that. Nice. So the uh, 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 and then I started playing guitar um, when I was in college, and and then uh, then I've practiced guitar for a while, and then switched to ukulele a few oh. years ago, and I've been playing. A lot of ukulele lately. That's been my the main my main passion for the last I'd say two or three years. Toward the end of our interview, I asked him if there was anything else that he wanted to say about his project. Uh, no. <laughs> Can will, will there be as we get maybe a bit further in development? Will you be? Oh yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. No, I, I'll be talking about it for sure. And uh, awesome. you know, I'm I. I, I ooh. I don't know when I'm going to start talking about it, but probably pretty soon I'll start talking about it. In the next few months, I'll probably start talking about what I'm doing. And that wraps up our interview series with David Brevik. As you've seen over the course of this series, and if you haven't seen the other videos, you can check them out. The links are in the description below. David Brevik is a humble guy with a lot of great and well-articulated ideas on game design, and it really shows that he's a veteran of the industry. Are you excited to see what game he's been working on? Sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.